come on now, did you really think I was gonna make a video about this thing without talking about Metal Gear Rising Revengeance? I'm not a complete masochist, you know. What we have here is a hacker slash title developed by Extravagant Studio Platinum Games starring Raiden, the semi-protagonist of Metal Gear Solid 2. A title which used said protagonist as an allegory for the recursive nature of sequels by making him deliberately lame. So yes, Rising is a little bit of an odd specimen, but it's surprising how Platinum manages to jump into a hack and slash set in the Metal Gear universe with such surprising ease. Raiden may have been deliberately out of place in Metal Gear Solid, but Metal Gear Rising is definitely his series, which he claims ownership of pretty damn quickly. Rising's combat revolves around chopping things up, and in that regards, it mostly nails what it's trying to accomplish. Swordplay is handled with two buttons, used to pull off the game's variety of combos. Mastering these moves, though, comes second to learning the simple parry system, which serves as a great way to put the player on the defensive while still giving them a chance to quickly get back into the action. The much-touted free cut mechanic is also at play here, allowing Raiden, given enough energy, to slow down time and slash with higher degrees of precision. What the game expects you to do is move with the left analog stick so you can then position your slash and cut with the right analog stick, which can be a little clunky. You can also use the face buttons to slash, though, which begs the question why there isn't an option to maybe use the shoulder buttons to cut, which would allow the player to move, aim, and attack all at once without relying on the analog stick, which is clearly a little overburdened. While the small niggles with the cutting mechanic can be overlooked, the way the title handles some of its moves is a little harder to ignore. Rising features directional attacks akin to the old Devil May Cry games, but its soft lock system simply isn't up to the task of implementing them fluently with the other types of attacks. Double tapping the analog stick or waving it back and forth can be handled in games like Devil May Cry 4 because the lock-on system is built to take advantage of them. In Rising, they're just thrown in without serving the flow of the combat very well. Much worse, though, is the way the inventory system is handled. To switch weapons and select items, Raiden has to stand still and enter this awkward selection menu. This is unfortunate because if the game allowed for on-the-fly weapon switching, it could have upped the variety of the combat significantly, again, much like the combat in Devil May Cry. It discouraged my will to experiment with the various tools Raiden unlocks. Why a weapon wheel, or even the old system used for previous Metal Gear games, wasn't implemented is beyond me. And damn it, Kratos, why does every hack and slash now have to use L3 and R3 to activate the super-duper powered-up mode? It doesn't exactly string into combat. Aside from the cutting gimmick, some of this may sound fairly standard, but where Rising manages to excel is in its speed and performance. It may not be as graphically intense as its predecessor Metal Gear Solid 4, but trust me, after having DMC slog across my screen barely touching 30 frames per second, playing Revengeance at a blistering 60 was something to behold. However, Platinum are still at the top of the pile when it comes to creating the most depressing looking grey cities in the medium, so kudos there, guys. On the other hand, animations are top notch, with attention to detail being a carryover from older Metal Gear games Rising thankfully doesn't dispense of. The game is great at engineering ridiculous scenarios. The boss fights, for example, extremely cathartic due partly to the game's honestly sublimely over-the-top soundtrack. After Rising, I don't think I can ever go back to playing an action game that doesn't incorporate the lyrics into a boss theme just as their final phase kicks in. Unfortunately, the game does screw the pooch a little with its constant inclusion of quick time events. While at times Revengeance relishes in placing the player in ludicrously extravagant situations without relinquishing control, at other times it cops out by making the player mash buttons or waggle the analog stick to escape a grab, a tedious exercise which can take the punch out of certain moments. One questionable mechanic is the inclusion of very shallow, underdeveloped stealth sections. I wouldn't really complain since they are completely optional and all the inclusion of a stealth system does is give the player more options. Trouble is, if you do opt to neglect the stealth segments, you'll be met with a rather uneven balance of enemy waves at times. Since the game assumes you done goof the stealth segment, high quantities of tough enemies will be sent in to tear you apart. Considering the series we're talking about here, I am a little surprised at how little depth these optional segments are given. Your options boil down to hiding in a box or barrel and using the radar to hopefully sneak by without the AI picking up on you. Yeah, you're given the odd useless gadget, but considering how overpowered your stealth takedowns are, they're barely worth mentioning. To be fair to DMC, I also played Rising on the highest default difficulty and found that while it certainly is nowhere near the hardest game of this type I've experienced, it certainly kept me on my toes, unlike Ninja Theory's insultingly easy title. Finally, though, we must come to the narrative, which has its ups and downs, to say the least. Rising is set some time after the events of Metal Gear Solid 4, with Raiden in the private military business trying to make the world a better place, but of course super cyborg terrorists aren't about to let that happen. Raiden's decision to return to the well killing business runs somewhat contrary to the way MGS4 ended, but as he sports a very noble code and outlook, tearing the place up as him is a good time. Until about the midway point where a certain regression, and I mean development, happens in which Raiden's character takes a left turn so hard it completely derails the original flair playing as him had at the start of the game, and certainly undoes whatever MGS4 was trying to do in a lot of ways. I wouldn't mind so much, but the sudden quite frankly poorly handled change doesn't affect the events of the plot at all. Raiden proceeds to do what he was going to do anyway, just with a dumb unnecessary change 
change that was probably supposed to fit in properly back when this title was set to take place in between Metal Gear Solid 2 and 4. It happens after a very well executed sequence in which you're forced to fight enemies while hearing their thoughts. And it's almost like Raiden's sudden change in character was made in part to hand wave away the elements brought up in this scene so we could continue on our merry way. I'm trying not to spoil what exactly happens here, but basically what I'm talking about is just one part of Rising's rather schizophrenic plot. At some points the game is insanely dark, and at other times it's camp and humorous. The dialogue is what saves it a lot of the time though. The characters get a lot of good lines, and it's hard not to crack a smile when the game breaks out some of its cheesy one-liners. Guess you better arrest me then. As an action game, Rising has much shorter cutscenes, but as a result, it fails to make you care much about both your allies and the bosses you meet. Some of the bosses are introduced just before you fight them, which is insane logic for a Metal Gear game. Even Deus Ex Human Revolution, with its abysmally characterized bosses, at least decided to show them to us in the intro before you face them. As a fast-paced action romp, it's probably for the best that the game doesn't force-feed the player too many long-winded, non-interactive segments. But I still think some of the time the characters do spend musing philosophically could have been used to develop the members of the cast a little more. What's the meaning of life? Why are we here? Revengeance is a very strange little title that's far from perfect, but at the same time has enough virtuous elements to make it one of the best hack and slashes out at the moment. It makes use of this gen's tech to great effect in creating a satisfying, heart pumping action title. That's my boy! Lucky devil. If you're up for a crazy adventure, Rising is well worth checking out, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to see more from this sub series further down the line.